Um, since this is the last class, and since you've all been writing so beautifully, we really want to make sure you know where you're going. And there's a kind of nice description of what writing a book is about. And uh, I thought we would start by having someone read it, first in English and then in Spanish. And Elsa, please translate what I just said. Vamos a estar usando el libro para hablar sobre eh, esta lección que vamos a tener el día de hoy, que los va a preparar para su semestre de, de, de um, septiembre, eh, sobre qué, cómo pueden seguir trabajando en su historia durante el verano. Oh, so, who would like to read from page, uh, the top of page two, which says writing a book? Um, okay. okay. <laughs> Don't get too close to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, should I, should I stand in the middle of the circle? You can be in the middle. Okay. Right. okay. It's page two. Okay. Um, writing a book or even a shorter or even a shorter story is like navigating a rowboat Slower. on a dark lake in the middle of the night. This is especially true if you don't know where you will end up. You pick out a light on the opposite shore and steer towards it until it goes out, and then you are forced to pick another nearby, which guides you to which guides you until it is until it too is extinguished, and so on with the next and the next. But none of this switching undoes the progress you have made. If you dare to steer by whatever light you see in your mind, as you land first on one scene, and then follow it with another and another, none of your rowing will have been wasted depending on how long your boat ride takes, many different lights will have guided you by the, by the time you will reach the opposite shore. Okay, so stop there, and um, somebody in Espanol. Alguien puede leer la parte donde dice, desde donde dice escribir un libro? Javier? Erika te va a decir donde. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you. Okay. Escribir un libro pequeño es como navegar en un bote en un lago oscuro durante la medianoche, especialmente si las si si no sabes a dónde llegarás. Te enfocas en una luz al lado opuesto de la orilla y manejas hasta que se desaparece. Luego te ves forzado a buscar otra más que te guíe hasta esta también se extingue lo mismo con la siguiente y la siguiente. Aunque sigues cambiando de guía, tu progreso no cambia. Si te haces una meta en tu mente, tu esfuerzo no pasará en vano. Dependiendo de lo largo de que se demore tu camino, muchas luces te guiarán hasta que llegues a la orilla opuesta. Hay un pasaje en el no, okay, that's, uh, that's um, but, um, So, now think about that. That's the way I like to think that writing a book takes place. You think you know where you're going, but suddenly you write a memory or a thought and it goes someplace else, but you still had the same basic idea for where you wanted to go. And I thought this might be a nice way to start, you know, the summer, to think what have you written already, and you'll have two months, really. So where would you like this to go? Um, so I'll start on that. Um, si ustedes leen esta parte, si la releen y los ponen a pensar, por ejemplo, ahí está hablando de una luz a la orilla. Esa luz, cuando se aproximen a ella, va a desaparecer y va a aparecer otra luz. Entonces, esa es la manera en que ustedes deben de seguir su escritura. Conforme van avanzando en la escritura, ella misma las va guiando hacia dónde tienen que seguir escribiendo. Y, um, y pensar en esta forma de escritura mm. los va a hacer avanzar en los aproximadamente dos meses que van a tener de verano para seguir avanzando en lo que ya tienen. So, um, uh, maybe we just go around the room and we'll ask everybody. Okay, um, or, um, so, just going this way, Katie. Okay. What would be your light if you want to say, uh, and just remind everybody where it starts and where you think it's going so far. My story? Yeah. Um, okay, so when I first started writing the story, I wrote about pretty much what happened to me, and it was pretty much just events. Um, and then as I started writing more, it became how those events affected me. And then even farther, <laughs> me, <laughs> um, it 
became more about like my internal struggles and really had nothing to do with what happened to me. So I think I'd like to go farther into that, into myself and healing and what that involves. So. And so just if you make believe, and everybody should think about this, your light, which is the way I see it, it's the last scene in the book. It may be too soon to know, and it will probably change. But if you imagined, you said something about healing and really understanding. If you just this minute imagined the last scene, and everybody imagine, try to imagine the last scene of Skeddy talking, so you should say that. Um, um, tiene que basarse básicamente en lo que ya han escrito y pensar, por ejemplo, en el caso, digamos, de Javier, que tú tienes dos piezas, una que escribiste el semestre pasado y una que escribiste en este semestre. Pensar a, a dónde quieres llegar con, ya sea que a, elabores tu pieza uno o elabores tu pieza dos y hablamos, hablamos alguna vez sobre tomarlos como capítulos de tu historia. Entonces, de alguna manera, ¿en, en qué tratarías tú de enfocarte? Um, eh, ¿qué escena, ¿En qué escena quieres seguir trabajando para seguir avanzando en la escritura? Eh, sería un, una buena pregunta. So, when everyone tried to imagine, so, what would you imagine the last thing? I think it's all the time, that's the last thing. Yeah. Uh, me? Yeah. So I kind of already have been like envisioning it and um, I want it to be completely removed from my story about um, my father or his addiction or my family and what happened to it and I want it to be just about me and I kind of briefly touched on it. Um, I wrote about me and my best friend. We were like really deep in the Rocky Mountains and it was really late at night. We were hiking and we were alone. and. Um, it was really quiet and it was just this moment where I was just like completely at peace hmm. and it was just a way I never really feel or I feel now but I never really felt before hmm. and it kind of just for me was where I like what this whole journey did to me like it made me have to find peace and wow. so hmm. that's where I want to end it. That's beautiful ending and it might change a little if yeah, you write definitely. all summer but we're trying to sort of imagine endings. But, um, so, uh, did everybody understand enough, or should you just give a little? Um, Comprendieron un poquito. Keri está está describiendo porque Erika está mencionando sobre um, avanzar un poco en la última escena. ¿Cómo tienen ustedes la visión de su historia pensando en la última escena, quizá que esta historia tendría? Eh, cómo la ven o, o, o cómo la ven que termina en el caso de Kerry está escribiendo que en el principio lo veía como una historia en cuanto a su papá y sus problemas con la adicción y su hermano pero después conforme fue avanzando en el proceso está un poco más enfocada en, en ella misma y en, en cómo esta jornada le ha llegado a, a tener paz interior y um, Y en eso es en donde está envisionando su última escena, en donde describe un momento que está con su amiga en las montañas y siente un momento de gran paz que nunca había sentido antes. Y por eso ese es el momento que ella está viendo como su última escena. Entonces eso les pone a pensar a ustedes qué última escena están viendo en su historia. So now you should start asking around for everybody, okay. sort of where it was going in the last scene. Um, y había empezado con Javier. Enfocándome más en lo que quiero comunicar a los demás y con mi historia y poniendo los más detalles para que ellos me entiendan lo que yo quiero decir de verdad. ¿Y cuál sería precisamente ese mensaje que tú quieres que ellos capten? Pero de cuál de las dos piezas? Es tu decisión. ¿Cuál de las dos piezas quieres decir? Digamos, um, bueno, en la primera historia en donde estás hablando acerca de uh, el lenguaje, de, de jóvenes que hablan español pero no quieren hablar, de yeah. casos de discriminación y deportación. Digamos, yeah. en, en, ese, en esa parte creo yo que el mensaje está mucho más claro que sí. en, la segunda, en la segunda versión. Sí. Um, ¿Cómo continuarías tú con la historia? Porque tu historia termina mm. en la... Uh, ¿Cuál es la última parte de la, de primera, de la, de la primera? 
no me acuerdo, creo que es cuando... Acabas de hablar con tu abuelita, ¿no? Oh, sí. Entonces, ¿cómo, cómo avanzarías o cómo cerrarías el círculo con esa pieza? Eh, por ejemplo, lo que pasó al final fue que ya después de eso, yo tengo a mis hermanos, mis hermanos, por ejemplo, siempre que mamá me mandaba a comprar, me mandaba a, comprar a la tienda, yo no, yo a mí no me gustaba ir solo porque yo no sé yo no sabía inglés so, eh, yo, yo llevaba a mis hermanos porque ellos son de aquí y ellos hablaban ellos tienen nueve ocho años entonces eh, y, y yo mismo me dije a mí mismo que, que no siempre debo no siempre no siempre va a haber alguien ahí para que me ayude entonces me decidí yo mismo que debo debo aprender inglés si quiero Superarme. Sí. Yeah. Well, just catch everyone up on the scene that he created. Well, he's he's talking yeah, so. about uh, a moment when he when he came into the United States and he didn't obviously he doesn't speak English, and um, and then his mom sent him several times to the store and he had to bring his siblings along. Uh, so they could translate for him because he didn't speak English. He didn't understand anything. So at that moment when he's at the store with uh, his little brothers, um, he decided that he has to learn the language and he has to, uh, you know, to just get along with the system and everything. Just uh, accomplished, um, I don't know, be a better citizen, I guess, be a better person and in any, any, any way, but specifically in trying to get accustomed to the culture. And first of all, learning the language. So it's again, uh, both these beginnings or endings were really a change, like mucho cambio, you know, cambio. <laughs> um, so, and that's important if you see that you're writing something for the reader to actually watch you change on the page. So in the summer, you'll have a chance to really see where you were on page one and then where you'll be. Uh, so somebody else, um, like whoever. Um, Emily Taylor. Okay. <laughs> okay, <coffee. laughs> um, I guess be. Um, the story that I started this semester has not really been very developed, so, but I have an idea for the way I could actually end the piece that I wrote about Rebecca in the Phoenix in the oh. hospital, um, because she's actually moving to North Carolina as a And remind everyone who didn't hear, hear that. Um, I wrote about um, my friend Rebecca and her uh, experiences like in and out of mental institutions and how uh, coping with her mental illness and how I felt that I was also coping with my mental illness at the same time she was, so that was sort of like a back and forth um, thing. But I, she, she's just, she just told me she's moving to North Carolina, so I think that if I was to end that now, I, feel, I would feel comfortable ending it because I feel like she's moving on to a new chapter in her life. And um, she's pretty happy about it. I feel like she's content with moving and doing something different in a new environment and things like that. So maybe that's the way that I can end that portion. So that maybe, you know, her suffering sort of, maybe if it hasn't ended, but it's, you know, stopped and she's opening herself up to a new experience, like a new chapter of her life. So I think that's where, if I was to end that now, I think that's where I would end that. And where would that, again, because Emily does such wonderful scenes. If you had to imagine a scene, so far we have in the Rocky Mountains, we have a moment. You know, not actually sure where Javier will be, but um, maybe, I mean, um, maybe like the, the the phone call which she told me she was leaving. Um, I feel like that was a sort of a poignant moment, but I'm trying to think of a scene. Um, maybe at her house, she has this really cool back room that has like um, like a fireplace and it's all like screened in and there's like Christmas lights hanging out. It's very like hipster tumbler. <laughs> um, and uh, it's really cool in there. What? I have a really good idea. Well, okay. I feel like the initial part of your story with Rebecca started with like, I, there's a specific scene you were talking about, you, you and her in the car, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and, and as you go and like, um, and that kind of brings into the beginning of your story with her. Mm -hmm. I feel like a scene that would be really cool to kind of close that off would be her getting in the car by herself and leaving. Mm 
and even, yeah. you know, and that would be cool. something different. I don't know if that's, you know. No, that would be. That's very cool. You know, so and you see, a good option. <laughs> it helps us all to imagine things. You can change your mind. By the time you're done writing, you may, it's like the light of the opposite shore. If you're trying to steer by a light and that light goes out, you don't panic. You just look for a light next to it, sort of the same direction. Um, so, um, somebody else. Can I else. just ask, you said um, your story is intertwined with Rebecca's, your yeah. own struggle. So how do you, s where do you see yourself? Like you've talked about resolving Rebecca. Oh, yes. How about this is going to probably you. end for a while because I have not known how to end. If someone, if someone remembers my mirror piece that I did about that, which is me talking to my insecurities, basically, back and forth, um, I've tried to grapple with that for a long time because it's like I want to say that my insecurities are done and that I, I've broken through the mirror and she's not there anymore and my insecurities are done, but I can't end it like that because it's not real. That's not a real thing. <laughs> So I'd like to be able to have a scene where I'm sort of looking at the mirror and like I see my reflection and I'm, I'm sort of at peace with myself rather than like I've broken through, I've conquered everything, I've vanquished her, like this hero or heroine type thing, um, which is what I originally planned out. But I'd like to be able just to say like you're at peace with your body. You're at peace with, with your reflection, the way that you look. Mm -hmm. I, I've been wanting to end it like that for a while, but it's, it's hard for me to end that piece very hard. I've been through this, I don't know, five semesters and I still can't do it, obviously. So, um, but that's what I, I, my goal for that, that's what I'd like to have. Yeah, yeah. maybe you could, how about the two of you standing in front of the mirror together? Yeah. And then she walks away. Yeah. And you're both standing in front of the mirror. So, that is cool. Definitely. I could see that. <laughs> yeah, very cool. But, uh, but you know, this is a question for everybody, let's say in Spanish too. Does an ending have to be a happy ending? Does it have to be resolved? Could it end with a question or a hope or a dream? Yeah. So, you know, just like. Erika está uh, haciendo la pregunta sobre si el final de una historia tiene que ser siempre un final feliz. Eh, creo que no, no siempre tiene que ser un final feliz y eso depende de cada persona, de la decisión de cada quien en cuanto a su escritura pero también involucra por ejemplo si podría terminar en una pregunta una pregunta retórica o en una en, en, en cuáles son las esperanzas o los deseos de la persona que está escribiendo la historia también. en sus sueños mm -hmm. exactamente mm -hmm. yeah. so what do you all think? ¿Qué piensas por ejemplo tú Carla? En, cuanto a tu historia, yeah. ¿dónde la ves llegar o, o, o cómo te imaginas que la estarías terminando? Pues quisiera terminarla dando, ajá, de eso estaba pensando, quisiera ter... no quisiera terminarla con un final feliz, porque quisiera darle a conocer de que también de que si se cae una hoja del árbol es por un propósito de Dios, ya sea bueno o malo, pero tiene, aunque muy por muy rara que sea la cosa, por muy malo o muy bueno que sea, siempre a eso tiene que ser su propósito, para algo. Pero no, la verdad no lo quiero hacer feliz. También quiero, ya en la última pieza quiero dar a, a conocerte que yo en el pasado no valoré nada de lo que tenía y que ahora me arrepiento tanto no haberlo hecho. Algo así, pero de tener un final feliz es no estaba pensando. Y si tuvieras que, que describir una escena, por ejemplo, hablando de lo que acabas de mencionar, ¿en qué, qué momento se dio, cómo se dio esa escena que, que describiría tú? Cuando, quizás en el primer momento de que yo vine aquí, que ya, con, ya yo, con, yo conocí a mi mamá aquí, entonces yo dije que toda mi infancia había dicho que jamás quería estar con ella, y me encuentro en un momento donde yo la estoy viendo a ella, yo no siento nada por ella. Yo digo, yo no quiero estar aquí, no quiero a mi hermana, no quiero vivir con un padrastro, quiero que quiero estar con mi abuela y con los que yo conozco. No quiero estar en un mundo nuevo, no quiero nueva comida, nuevos compañeros, nuevos amigos, no quiero nada, solo quiero mi vida de nuevo. Because you know her mom left when she was six, and she comes here and meets her mom, and 
she realizes that she doesn't have any kind of feeling for her mother. She doesn't mm -hmm. love her little sister. She doesn't want to live in this country. She doesn't want to try new food. She doesn't have, uh, she doesn't want to have new friends. Uh, the only thing she wants the most is to go back with her grandmother and her, um, her life. Mm -hmm. So that's very different but they're all very, very powerful endings. There's not a recipe or one way to make the ending, but the ending leaves you with an emotion. Like when I'm driving home, I always say this. So far, I would be thinking about all these endings because they're all very powerful. They're all very muy emocionante. They're, you know, importante. And they're a journey, really. There. You've gone from one, and you know this is a sad, a sad ending. But it's an ending that so many people can relate to, and it's very real. Yeah. You know, I, I think that from what I've seen, all your stories are getting more and more real. The more you write them, the more real they're getting. You know, so, um, so someone else. <laughs> Gabby, maybe? Um, so I kind of like wound up taking some stuff out that I didn't really like. Like the whole like Babel scene, like Weight Watchers thing, I just like wound up scrapping it. Um, so I like edited it down to like what I have now. Um, so like I do still like want to continue with this story because like for me it's like an ongoing thing and there's like so much. I can like do but like the way I ended it today was like with um, a poem um, so that's what I did with that like and for those of you like who were here um, last year and like remember Poseidon poem like that kind of came back but it's like a newer Ooh. thing so yeah so like um, with my previous story, I'd been writing about like an abusive relationship. So like throughout that story, I wrote two poems centered around like Poseidon, because like the water and the ocean are like my favorite things. And so with this one, because like I had started with like the swimmer scene, so I kind of like tried to like go with that, um, like water imagery again and like keeping that. So I ended with like another Poseidon poem. But like a new one. So. This is entirely new? Yeah. Cool. It's, cool. Almost, it's like part two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. But so, like, I'm still like trying to like work on my story. So. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, Gaby está describiendo sobre lo que continúa escribiendo. Si se acuerdan de la escena en donde ella habla del lugar en donde su mamá la lleva para perder peso, el programa para adultos para perder peso, está tratando de avanzar en esa, en esa pieza y escribió un poema acerca de eso, después escribió también un poema acerca de Poseidón porque dice que, que el mar es algo de sus cosas favoritas, y escribió un poema también de eso, um, so vamos a ver. I originally started um, last semester writing about how my struggle with mental illness um, is viewed in a criminal kind of sense of way or how mental illness in and of itself can be looked at as, as something wrong with you or that you're dangerous in that kind of aspect. Um, I'm not really sure the direction in which I would like to end it. Because again, with very similarly, it's not in just stop kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't just end. Um, I don't. I'd like feedback about how I could potentially end it, but I really have no idea how I would end it. Okay, um, I'll ask. I have, I'll, I have an idea. Okay, I'm oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, I'm thinking that because your writing has been very like sporadic just because it's like hectic, like you go through extre extreme highs and extreme lows. 
um, maybe a place of just content to end it, like you feel content, or like a, a like a, we were talking about a place of peace, you know, that you want to try to reach for. It could just be hopeful, the ending. Like I'm hoping for that peace. I'm striving for that peace rather than I've got it and this is the end. You know what I mean? So something like that, like you're just hopeful for the future rather than you're scared of the future or you don't want the future to come. You're you're just hopeful for it. Oh. There's one. Sorry, I feel like I have to sneeze. <laughs> um, there is one part piece that I had written, and the end of it was like, I don't know. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> so I, that might be a cool way to end it with that piece. You know, I was that thinking exact. That's interesting. <laughs> I was thinking exactly the same thing. And I was actually going to ask all of you if you remembered her other endings, because each of her pieces, that one actually has the words, I don't know. Yeah. But almost every piece that Taylor has written has the idea of, I don't know. And then you think she's going to really go down and be defeated, and then Something pulls her, not all the way up, but up enough so that then she can keep going. And it's almost like your ending has to do with your style. Like when Carla was talking, her ending is so much like her style all along. Mm -hmm. You know, or Javier, or any of you, you know, it's kind of like, it's whatever it is you're trying to do. And I think that yours will probably end in a moment of, I don't know. But um, there's a book I actually love uh, that a doctor wrote called The Wounded Storyteller. And he said there's a whole movement now for doctors to let their patients say the truth. Because what he said is that most doctors wanted their patients, even if somebody's dying of cancer, to tell a positive story. Oh, well, you know, oh, yeah. God will take care of me, or I'm fine, or I'm calm, or I'm reconciled. And you know what? Life isn't like that. Yeah. And so this idea of the doctor who is able to hear a story, where there's maybe pain, disappointment, sorrow, it's more real. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think your story is so important. Yeah, so, um, so we have about two more people. Uh, uh, Maria, quieres hablar acerca un poquito de tu, de tu historia? De cómo va a ser el final. Mm -hmm. ¿Qué visión tienes en cuanto a lo que has escrito? Yo creo que es la valoración a una mamá, porque cuando el momento que nos cae ella, o sea, nosotros nos damos cuenta de las cosas, cuando ella estaba y cuando ella no estaba. Entonces, yo creo que eso es. Y, y si tuvieras que describir la escena específica donde te das cuenta de eso, ¿cuál sería? Yo creo que como nosotros somos mujeres y compartimos con otras mujeres nuestros sentimientos, nuestras emociones, ahí es cuando nos damos cuenta, porque a un padre no es lo mismo decir. Cuando estás sola, entonces, ¿te refieres a que en el momento que estás sola o contándole a alguien, te das cuenta de valor de tu mamá o de cómo te sientes cuando estás sola? Yo creo que cuando estoy sola, me doy cuenta de lo que siento por ella, de lo que me 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 siento Yo creo que la mamá es como más confianza para decir lo que uno sabe, porque o sea, decir a un hermano, porque yo en mi caso solo tengo hermanos, y también se lo puede decir a una hermana, pero no a un hombre. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and her mom stayed here with her brother because her brother was sick and um, so she had to go back expecting her mom to go back to the country as well but then her mom called and said I'm not coming back and she's describing the moment when she realizes the value that her mom has in her life because she's the only girl in the family and um, suddenly she finds herself with no one to talk to. Um, her mom was her best friend and all you know, all her secrets and everything. She will tell her, her mom uh, first person. And um, when she realized that she had to tell how she felt, the way she, uh, she was feeling that moment when her mom was not coming back, she had to tell all that to a friend and not to her mom herself. She realized uh, the figure that her mom has in her life. Mm. Yeah, wow. Well, um, it will be, again, very, very powerful. And see, it's all, almost all of them are circles in some way. They circle back, you know, to the first page. I'm sorry, we have one more. What about the anchor? <laughs> Yo no sé, pero creo que voy a hablar sobre algún día que yo estaba con mi abuela. No sé. ¿Todavía no lo has pensado? No. She doesn't have a very clear where she wants to go. Yeah, but where, and everybody can help, but what, what is your major theme, like say, what you've written so far? Que tu primera pieza habla de ese día donde estás con tu que fallece tu tu primo tiene un accidente. Sí, pero voy a hablar sobre mi abuelo, sobre tu abuela. Okay. Pero si si tú ya decidiste hablar sobre tu abuela, ¿qué es lo que quieres contar acerca de tu abuela? Por ejemplo, sería una buena pregunta. ¿Por qué es tan importante para ti hablar de ella? Porque ella es una persona muy importa, importante para mí. Mm -hmm. Ella como... Sí. Brazil, and I would love for her to come. She's working, training to be a facilitator, and I'd love her to come sometimes, and she could work with you. But have you been typing your stories? Or no? If you type them in Portuguese, Andrea, we could have Andrea make a translation into both English and Spanish. Because it's wonderful. I can see when you're listening how much you're hearing of both languages. It's really great. So I hope you can come next semester. Yeah. But hmm. sometimes when you write from the heart, like I'm, all of you are doing, you almost understand a language you don't know. That's what I think. The, the first word I ever learned in Spanish from the workshops was corazón, you know? Heart. And Heart. Yeah, and you just, I don't know, do you all feel that way, that you're sort of learning the other one's language from the stories? Yeah, I, I took Spanish in high school, so I get a little bit of it, but not, not as much as I wished, actually. <laughs> and even when Bianca was uh, reading in Portuguese, we were all paying attention to see we could pick some words <laughs> out and um, <laughs> but it was great it was a very good experience I think um, yeah and each language has such a special rhythm 
so that it's just good if you any of you are really serious about being a writer, just the rhythms of the language. You know, I'll never be able to write anything that you would want to read in Spanish, but I think that the Spanish rhythms come into what I write in English. And, you know, none of you are going to lose your rhythms. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, definitely we'll try to have Andrea come next time. Yeah. I think that it, what you said before, when you write from the heart, it's, it's the most important thing because when I started writing in English, I thought, and, and you remember that I said this oh, to yeah, you, you I said, sure. I don't know if I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, I, my, my English is not perfect. I'm, try, I'm studying, I'm trying. Mm -hmm. Um, but writing it is a whole different story. And uh, so I said, I'll try because I didn't want to translate what I had in Spanish to English, so I decided to start a new piece. And, and I think it worked. Um, and I, I was surprised. Worked. I was surprised at myself that I could do it because I was so scared to do it. But I think that, that is true. When you write from your heart and, and you, know, you, you put your heart on, on your paper, um, then it works perfectly well. So I bet you all want pizza now. Yeah. So that's the I really want <laughs> <laughs>